Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. Face shave time, I had my head shaved this morning, beautiful shave, no issues, no blood, no nothing, superb. I'm using the same razor today for my face shave, which is the leaf razor, but before we get to that, we'll look at the soap, or should I say cream. Now this is Pear Burr Shop, it's a pear scented, barber shop oriented type scent. The labelling is lovely. Now this is a West Coast shaving product, as you can see up here, but this was actually made by Katie's Bubbles. I don't know who did the scent, because the scents I believe were done between Oleo Soapworks and Katie's Bubbles, but this is his premium shaving cream formula. Chris Cullen over there. He makes wonderful soaps. I don't think they're on the same level as the best, but they have very good soaps. However, his cream is excellent. Now all the labelling is all lovely. Lovely little pears all over the place. Small batch, artisan made. Ingredients list. Very minimalist, it really is. If you want to pause and have a look there. Barcodes, something that's re relatively unusual on an artisan soap, but these get sold in store as well. So four ounces, a cooling fruit barber shop scent. Now the scent on it is absolutely beautiful. It's just pear with a bit of powderiness, a little bit musky. It's just really nice. It's not a scent you would wear to a nice like night out or anything, but it's a nice fruity, strong scent it's a good sort of six or a seven cent strength and it performs very well as you will soon see i've got my brush soaking as you can see it is my wee scott from simpson i think it's a 13 millimeter knot tiny little brush best badger here it's the only brush that Alexander Simpson put his name on. I think it's Alexander, I'm sure it is. I'm just going to dip it back in the warm water, flick out the excess, and then straight into this dry cream. Now the cream has firmed up over time, which I prefer. I can now lather straight off the top of the cream. But essentially I can still scoop some out with my finger, pop it in a bowl, and lather up that way. As it is, I prefer to lather in the soap, and it's just, or load in the soap. It's just what I prefer. Now, I wasn't going to have a face shave today, but I feel I just had to use my channel a little bit to get stuff off my chest. Today was MRI scan result day on this wrist. Now, if you guys have watched me for the last sort of two or three months, you'll know I've had some issues with pain and holding stuff and just generally struggling altogether with my left wrist. Now, I've been able to do things that I was surprised I could do that didn't affect it in terms of pain, push-ups being one of them. But I've been for my MRI today, and I've found that I've got two torn ligaments. One is a significant tear, partial tear, but significant. And the other one, I don't, I don't know how bad that one is. I've also got a fracture in my hand. <laughs> and the bone which is healed has misaligned quite badly, apparently to the point that that could be the issue that I'm having with the clicking and the pain and rotating my wrist. So I have been referred to an orthopaedic surgeon. I will see or speak to him on the phone on the 17th of April because he isn't doing any face-to-face. -face. Look at that, that's just out of the tub. He's not doing any face-to-face -face appointments because of the coronavirus or COVID-19 or whatever you're calling it in whatever country you live in. So I'll have a, an appointment then on the 19th, on the 17th, where we will have a chat on the phone. He will explain what options are open to me, what needs to be done in order to fix me. Hopefully that's the plan. And the, the upside is he's got a lot of ammunition to sort of look at. He's got the x-rays, the ultrasounds, He's got all the previous x-rays from the broken arm last year and he's also got the MRI which was pretty conclusive apparently according to the the person that looked at it. So where I'm at at the moment is I, I, I'm on a I don't really know how to describe it I'm, I'm really happy in a sense that I know there's something wrong it's not just in my mind there is something going on in there which is more significant than I thought the next hurdle is going to be is it something that can be fixed which I'm sure it will be 
but the problem I'm facing now is because of the coronavirus and the shutting down of a lot of places, including this, the surgeon's workplace. But elective surgery is only available when it is by way of an emergency. Now, it's not an emergency. So, it leaves me in a position, not a very good position, with regards to how long is it going to be. That is if it needs intervention that way. It might not. But I'd be surprised if it didn't. My next worry is, having spent so long healing, trying to get back, they may have to break the bone and reset it. And that's my major worry, because I know then I'm looking at a minimum, I reckon probably three months again, from the time of the operation. Now, if the operation doesn't occur for, just say for say six, six months, say it takes that amount of time, that means I'm going to be over a year out of work, albeit I'm on insurance now, It's a bit of a nightmare, it really is. All because some old fella wanted to be a prick and just basically assault me while I was playing football. It's great, isn't it? How you, the, the thing you love to do, the sport that you've loved all your life to play, could ultimately be the, I mean, I, I'm running the risk now of losing my job, really. It's gonna, at this, this rate, if I do need like surgery, I'm going to run over a year. Now I have been told by work that if it's, I mean I'm obviously doing everything I can to get back, it's not like there's nothing wrong with me, you know the scans are, con are conclusive, I've got issues, I've got injuries there, I've got underlying problems that I'm trying to fix. But the worry is always there and it always will be until I get back to work. I've had absolutely no, nothing back from work at all. In the last sort of three or six months. You can see that ladder. It's very, very nice. Now, I'm not going to work this up into a frenzy because I'm using the leaf razor today. You can see that's got a lovely gloss to it. Amazing what you can get out of a little 13 millimetre knot. And I have to say, the best best badger grade here that Simpson used, that I've used in this and in my Chubby 2, which is now in heaven, or hell, probably hell, putting me through all that shit. What this thing? There's more, the ladder is bigger than the brush nearly. I have to say that the best badger that Simpson used is very, very nice. Now, I'm just going to use my carve just to tuck in here. I didn't have to do my whole lip, I just did it because obviously, why not? Derby blades, I tell you that the, in that razor, superb. Now, I am using a Derby blade again. Come on, focus. There we go. A little bit. You can actually see the wax through on that one now. So what you do, snap it in half. Click, click. Bing, bang, bong. The good thing, there is wax on these Derby blades. But there's not a lot on there. Tiny little, two little blobs there, three blobs. Nothing near the blade edge. The razor has got no blades in it. I have cleaned it off. My daughter's razor arrived today as well, she doesn't know, but it arrived today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop a blade, now these are mild blades, I'm going to pop a blade, this is just a bit of an experiment, in the mildest setting, which is the top one, I'll flip that up, probably done this back to front, but who cares, and then I'm going to pop another blade in the second mildest setting, which is the second one down, 
Just make sure the blade's pulled down so there's nothing in the most efficient blade slot. Second most efficient, mildest, pop the lid over and screw it down. And there we go. Come on, there you go. Two blades, nice and straight, beautiful. Dip in the water, and here we go. It's a beautiful scent. I just want to show you from the side view how well this pivot works. So it's such a good pivot. There's just enough force or push back from it that makes it work very well. Now that's done a reasonably good job. It hasn't taken it right down. It's not with the more efficient blade, I get a lot closer. But I've used the two mildest blades just to see if I can get a sort of a blood-free, irritation-free, weeper-free type of shave. I'll just wipe my face here. Scoop the excess on my face. I do. I had an ingrown hair down here, which I tackled with the tweezers before the shave, so it's actually bleeding when I started the shave. You can see the bump right there, but the hair's now out. Beautiful menthol feel. I have to say, I was a bit worried about this soap causing me some irritation, but nothing of the likes. Just that lovely menthol feel. So here we go for pass number two. See how close I can get under the nose of it this time. Just such a well designed razor. I, I can't wait for the, the latest model to come out soon, whenever it comes. Look, doing a great job. No lubrication, no lubrication, no lubrication strips, nothing fancy on this razor, it's just a chunk of metal that holds up to three blades and it works marvellously for me, I really enjoy using it. People have said, well you just talk about that razor the whole time you're using it, it's a freaking good razor, you know, and even the die hard, hardcore double edged razor users can't even whinge about it really being a cartridge in my opinion because it uses all the same blades. It's all metal construction. You're not. It's not costing you really a fortune to run it, not to use it. It just works an absolute charm. Smooth. It's comfortable. It's well designed. It looks nice. It's got everything you want, really. See what it's like against the green. Just 
it's just brilliant. It really is. Let me just grab the little brush. See, it's getting a little bit slippy there. You've got to be careful with this razor, I have to say. It does get a little bit slippy if you let the soap go on it. BBS, boom. Oh, I've got a weeper there. Don't believe that. And I've got a little one there. But other than that, pretty good. It's buttery smooth. Right, let's just finish off around the lips. So as you can see, the lather's quite thin now. Believe it or not, I could probably add a little bit of water to it and it would grow again. I've got one weeper there, I've got one weeper there, and that ingrown here is a little bit weeping a little bit. But other than that, it's, it's lovely, it's really nice to use. Bada bing, bada boom. Does it get any easier than that, really? Just missed a couple of little bits under my nose with the car there. I've just wiped that off. <sighs> so yeah, a sort of bitter sweet day today and I'm sort of glad there's something wrong because I was getting to the point where I was starting to sort of panic if it was in my head and I was, I'd been off for so long and didn't want to go back to work in my mind and I don't know, I could actually want to go back to work, that's the crazy thing. Just hoping workers understanding about it. Obviously, they're not essentially paying me anything. I've had my final wages. I've had all my sick pay, all my annual, all my leave. Everything's all paid out, so they don't owe me anything. But of course, if they're having to fill my spot at work, they're having to pay someone overtime, which is worse than paying me. But then again, they're only paying the extra on top of whatever the cost they have me really, because I would have been there in the first place. But I don't know. I don't know where it stands at work. One weeper, two weepers, then growing here. Poche is really nice as well. Definitely, he's definitely got a great cream for sure. Chris Cullen over at Katie's Bubbles. <laughs> Going to finish off today once again with AP Reserve Essentials Restoration Peptide Concentrate Serum. A big mouthful of that. Wet the hands. One squirt. The, the passion fruit scent with this cream goes well, really well with, with fruity scented soaps. Beautiful. And that is it, I tell you. Does not come really much easier than that. If you're struggling with DE razors and, and or you've been using them a long time and still having problems, I do find this razor does give me less irritation overall in general. I might even be able to use it with two blades daily. West Coast Shaving, 
jojoba shave cream pear bar shop beautiful cooling mentholated pear scented barber shop and it's really really nice the brush for today was the little beast the wee scott such a nice brush not the easiest to sort of hold and work with but you've seen the lather it creates it creates a great lather i will say i've had this for a while now and i've used it a lot for what it is i think i've used it probably 15 times i can still smell badger funk in there it really needs to get some of that badger or natural hair brush cleaning cream started to shave off with the calf today just to get under the nose and feel spot on but there you go the leaf razor and the mercury finish with two blades in the mildest positions whip the grain cross the grain both ways a bit of against the grain and i've ended up with two weepers i think is it two or three can't remember super and then we finished off with ap reserve essentials restoration peptide concentrate serum <laughs> What's the fire? APR, APR, ER, PCS. And it's not even worth fucking abbreviating it, is it? The blades today, brilliant in the calf and really, really nice in this razor with the Derby Extras. Cheapest chips. You can literally use them once and chuck them out, but why would you when you're getting great shades from it over and over again? I, I might even leave them in this razor just on that setting and see how it goes for a little bit. And with that, Stay safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive. I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.